Happy Saturday. Hope everybody's okay. Thank you all for joining. Before I go any further, can people hear me? Agnes, well, congratulations to you. 15 times over that massive bridge. I can't pronounce the name, but tour the big bridge in Holland. 105 kilometers, 800 meters of climbing, and that's hard to come by in Holland. Kudos, Agnes. Agnes. Kudos Agnos, kudos Agnos. All good, thank you very much. Yeah, it's taking a bit of a while to warm up. A bit of a while. Um, did you smash your race this morning? Nice one. Hoping to get out for some hills. If it's not raining, David, that's the thing. If it's not raining. So I need, before we go any further, to canvas opinion. There are three options. Let me find what they are, because I've got to join the race. Um, where's he going? Yeah, there's a Frenchy Fusion double attack where you do a Bologna TT and then we do this um, figure of eight. Um, so nine to about 9.20, the TT, then the figure of eight. It'll be emotional. Good luck today, Paul, because you're in one of the other options. Sorry, good luck today, Francis. My apologies, Francis, because I know you're in one of the other options. Ride Like King 13, which is on, um, it's on the Magnificent Eight, which you can't actually find. So it must be one of those courses that's only available for racing. It's a WTRL TTT course for next week. And then finally, where's it gone? There's a herd race, which looks quite good as well at 9 a.m. The Herd Summer Racing League and it's out and back again. So that includes an ascent of the volcano. So we've got the double etap, TT, race on the figure of eight. We've got the Magnificent Eight with Francis. And we've also got um, out and back again. Which will it be? Please vote. The, the mig it's event only, Magnificent Eight. Is it okay? The herd, okay, yes, herd. What else have we got going? All things are good, Phil. I know you're swifting at the, swifting at the moment, Phil. Oh, dear me. The herd for Ian. Anyone else? What's Francis saying? I, I didn't see that. My, I haven't got my glasses on. <laughs> Cheers, James. I will enjoy myself, hopefully. The Magnificent Eight, we don't see it that often. So I think I've got two for the Magnificent Eight, one for the Herd, two for the Herd. The fact, yeah, the Volcano Facials. Out and back, so that's three for the Herd. Four for the Herd. Here we go. I think the Herd is gonna swing it. Morning, everybody. Sorry, I'm not calling everybody out as you join my apologies. Yeah, so the herd has it. All right, so I should do out and back again. Let me join that. Oh, it doesn't start until 9.15. Why is that? It says 9 a.m. Oh, there's three categories. That's a bit of a schoolboy error from me. Ride like a king. So we've got most people going for the herd, but I've got 15, I've got 25 minutes to kill. Herd is racing, okay. Ride like a king, okay. So the herd has it. Um, I'm gonna have to chat until quarter past in that case. Um, my, my apologies, I've started it too early because I thought we would, I thought people would go for the double attack. It's a great ride, okay. Okay, so the herd it is, out and back, it's 40 odd kilometers. Morning, Katie. How was your uh, WTRL this week? It was properly emotional on the Champs Elysees, and very well done to everybody who took part in that race. I enjoyed watching. Watching being the operative word. It was disgusting, and it was a very good performance um, from the races without mercy. 
Um, very good DSing from Aaron. <laughs> Lee, I, I haven't yet taken um, the fry up pre racing advice on board yet. I don't know how you managed to do it, Gorby, um, with all of that in your tummy. I think I'd have literally cried. You enjoy the Tom Danielson book, I use your own. It's really interesting, isn't it? It's been a bit controversial, so I'm going to address some of the comments. Well, I address some of the comments individually, um, all of the comments individually regarding it. And really, I guess because I kicked off with the power zones and he has the 11 power zones, Tuesday was tough. Yeah, the Royal Watts. Well, so, okay, well, you're challenging for the top 10, which is amazing in its own right. But yeah, it was a, it's a Royal Watt race. Um, if you're light, it kills you on the downhills because you don't get the recuperation. Hey, Lord, how's it going? We're doing the figure, uh, the Herd Summer Racing, Racing League. I, oh, I haven't yet joined it. One second, I've got to give it the old depress of the button. Yeah, so going back, sweet spot this morning. You're gonna have oh, okay, nice one, Nick. Nick's on the same team. Races without mercy. He took down four vegan burgers post race. He didn't really. <laughs> he and his missus had one each, and I think they had one for lunch. But if a story's worth telling, it's worth improving. Yeah, so the, um, yeah, so I started with the 11 power zones on my vlog, and people got quite irritated about the 11 power zones. I'm not really advocating changing the power zones to training, and I don't think that's what Tom is advocating. Well, he is advocating that, to be fair. But what I'm saying is, on a longer ride, like, 80 to 140 kilometers, which is a long one for me. If I go in with a mindset that my threshold is what is set by my 20 minute test, and I learned this in Italy, and I go and hit a climb targeting like 295 to 305, I crash and burn. Literally. It's, it's you know, and yet I can get that kind of FTP very consistently on a test. If I do a one hour FTP, I'm like 280 to 282 most recently outside. And I learned in Italy that if I ride at like 20 watts below, or 15 to 20 watts below my FTP on the bigger climb, I feel quite good. I'm not saying it's easy, but I feel good. And definitely, I believe, it is my experience, that there are varying degrees of threshold. And that's why there's this concept, I guess, called sweet spot. And at the lower threshold, which is one of the gold standards of Tom Danielson, yeah, it's not quite as impressive in terms of watts, but it's fast and you're sparing glycogen because you're using both body fat and glycogen. And definitely that's my experience. I can go a hell of a lot longer at 270 to 280 watts, which is still in my threshold power zone, than I can at 300. Dipping up even from 290 to 300 does disproportionate damage to me. So I, I tried this, fasted, and you'll see my vlog at the weekend. I did a fasted ride, a tap to London, very much like Agnes. I did a tap to London. I got in about 2,000 meters of climbing, all in zone two. Yep, I really do lack imagination. Two different climbs, same hill, Highgate West Hill and Swains Lane. And I did an hour, an hour of tempo at the inner circle. And you'll see how I fared with a fasted ride, because I wanted to experiment with the energy systems. Yeah, cheers, Jerome. We will compare notes. Because I'm not saying you have to, you know, Christ, none of what I say is advice. I'm not really in a position to give advice. I'm just showing you what I'm doing. And I've got to say, check out Tom Danielson's book. It's a fascinating read. And it's not just about the power and the energy systems 
is about the technique and the mindset and the nutrition. It's a very holistic approach to riding a bike. And I, I've loved the book. Love the book. Ed Laverack's still doing the training programs. I've got a disgusting one that I did on Thursday, literally. Oh, the, the only fat burns I Yeah, no, this is very controversial, Phil. Uh, Philip. Because rightly, a lot of people rightly have pointed out, and Paul Hamblett, who knows a lot about this, from testing fat burning in scientific labs, says that everybody is different in terms of utilization of carbs versus fat. And some are more fat adapted, definitely. But what I would say is, as intensity rises, you are burning through more glycogen. And therefore, there has to be a relative benefit for everybody in terms of sparing glycogen by finding that point. Now you could call it a sweet spot, that's fine. But all sweet spot is, is in effect, a different threshold come tempo power zone. Tom just seems to call it power zone five. So I guess, I guess it's, you know, it's not overly controversial because a lot of people say what good gains they get on sweet spot. Mr. Raynham. Cheers, Phil. Hope yours goes well. Which one are you doing, sir? I would have been doing the recon race, Katie, but I've got a very exciting trip planned with Jane. We have booked, and this is no kidding, I'm gonna build this up. We have booked a slot, very exciting in the context of all the reopening. We have booked a slot to go, and you will not believe this, to the local tip we're taking a load of rubbish to the tip but we have to be there between 11 and 12. Living the life. Hey Ian, what's the off-topic question? Hey Silver, what was your 20 watt increase? With Sweet Spot, nice one. Hey Silver, 20 watt increase to Sweet Spot over two months, that is huge. God dear, I'd love a 20 watt increase. Maybe I need to do more sweet spot. Hey Paul, have you given blood yet? A recycling center is it now? Okay, yeah, the recycling center. Rubbish. <laughs> boom, boom, he's a very funny man, Chris Platt. Ladies and gentlemen, Chris Platt. He's a very, very funny man. Go and check him out. Live at various clubs around the north of England and London, the East End. You're in the front pack getting dropped, dropped, dropped. Yeah, Ben, I know that feeling. This is why the channel's called Bike Racing Without Mercy, because I used to get dropped so early. Now I just get dropped a little bit later. You're here all week, <laughs> yeah. Headlining. <laughs> Headlining uh, one of her, some kind of snooker hall. There we go. Cryptocurrency, you bought some. Yeah, it's really interesting cryptocurrency. <coughs> because basically, I believe it is a store of value of loads of historic transactions. And it is very secure, unless it gets hacked. And I think the only thing that could probably hack a cryptocurrency is quantum computing, which is still a bit of a techn technology arms race. It's very volatile because it's a traded, well all currencies are traded, but it's a very volatile traded currency. And um, the regulatory environment is uncertain because certainly Bitcoin is accused of not really being able to pro provide comfort as to the providence of the currency, i.e. have proceeds from money laundering, financial crime, terrorism, being used to buy some of the things that are a store of value. Um, and so there is always that kind of cloud hanging over it. But also Elon Musk, who's made a fortune with um, Tesla speculating on Bitcoin, has said that he will no longer accept um, Bitcoin as a payment type because of the environmental damage it does. Bitcoin is mined by computers, massive banks 
of computers, like vast, vast um, technology is deployed to do billions of calculations a second in order to mine um, the currency. I'm not quite sure how the mining process works, but it requires a vast amount of energy. Um, I think it's something like all of the energy that the UK uses, it's something like, not, it's something like 0.5% of global energy and therefore fossil fuels are being used to mine Bitcoin. I th it wasn't far off the entire UK energy consumption in a year. Something ridiculous. Hey Graham, how are you? Graham, Terry, spoiling Lisa with the ice spice buns and champagne, sir. I'm gonna put that on my Instagram later. I love that. That. <laughs> Anyone who used to watch the fast show, Swish Tony, Belgian chocolates and fine wines. Well, he should have said, fine wines and ice spice buns. That's how you impress a lady. Yeah, I agree, Martin. I mean, mining the essential minerals for car batteries is equally, agree. there's so much controversy and hypocrisy regarding um, environmental damage, let alone shipping all the components backwards and forwards across the world um, for these supply zones, sometimes flying the components. Um, and how long do the batteries last? And actually only a tiny fraction of them get um, recycled. I guess he's trying to divert a bit of attention. It's a really good point, Martin. Yeah, look at this. We're having a philosophical debate. So I think you know, there are hedge fund managers out there um, who are saying Bitcoin could go to like, you know, double, treble in value. I really don't know what the outlook is for the currency. There's a lot of interest in it. Um, but also, I always think when everybody is making money in something and everybody's piling in, because it's been as low as, I don't know, seven or eight thousand dollars a Bitcoin and now it's like north of 50, I think. You've got to ask yourself, is that a sustainable bubble? I really don't, I don't put it this way, I'm not buying any Bitcoin. But, but don't follow anything that I would say. I am, um, any stock or share I buy or sell do the opposite. All I do is buy trackers and leave my money in the bank account. Property is the only thing that I've bought, and even in central London that hasn't done very well. So I, <laughs> I bought obviously a car, that definitely hasn't gone up. So yeah, banker, definitely never take advice on where to invest from a banker, but bankers know about the investment. They're just awful at deciding where. That's why I do debt, because all I have to look is at the downside risk. I what could go wrong, I'm much better at that. I don't have to worry about what could go right. <laughs> 100 mile sportive. Hey Scott, I reckon, now there, there's two schools of thought on this. There is most of the cycling world, he must be right, and me. I don't enjoy zone two very much, even though I'm doing a bit of it, well, zone one, zone two now. I do a lot of tempo, because I enjoy it, but, on balance, my rides tend to be, on the longer ones, average power, kind of zone two, maybe lower zone three. And if it's hilly, lower zone two. Um, and so I do think that the sweet spot training that people have been talking about, or just tempo training, I, and for me that's kind of low to mid zone three, I've used that to build my fitness, but we'll see how it goes um, on my sportive on Sunday, where so many of us are taking part. Oh my word, <laughs> the guy had a load of Bitcoins on a hard drive and threw it away. Oh, the, imagine your heart sinking. That must be horrific. You like the, hey Daz, yeah. You're doing a WTRL, you do the uh, tempo 
and sprint. You're trying it out, yeah. I just, I don't have the time for the really long rides very often. And I just find the tempo, I just like the feel of it. Yeah, d did you win your race, David? I, I forgot to check. So yeah, Scott. I think the most important thing is to get the time in the saddle and see what you enjoy. It's billion, it's, it's billions now. Is that the Bitcoin? Um, no, no, Ed, it's not a race. You, it's, we're doing the, um, the Herd Summer Racing League. Good luck today, by the way, Ed, on your 50 mile TT. You're looking strong. Hope you get good weather for it. Yeah, the chip prices, yeah, that's because the supply of the chips has fallen. There you go, Alex. Yeah, Alex knows what he's talking about. Um, does a lot of racing on the continent. Built huge fitness, so if you're doing a lot of riding, I guess, yeah. You, I rarely, I mean like 10 hours is a huge week for me on the bike. So there is that to it as well. Whereas I guess if you're clocking up 15 to 20 hours on the bike in a week, a load of zone two is much more viable. <laughs> Did you now, David? I thought you'd been watching the, um, the old waistline. Two pineapple fritters. I haven't had a pineapple fritter in ages. Hey, Camille. Oh, the, the race, Camille, sorry, it's, um, it's starting very shortly, it's at 9.15. I'm gonna to go to the, uh, actually, let me finish the loop. I've nearly done the loop. See, I'm enjoying myself now. Keep forgetting I've actually got a race. Oh, that's interesting, Dad. I mean, yeah, I think I'm a diesel. I'm definitely not a sprinter, as people know. But, um, yeah, I'm TTing, Dad. Um, I, it's partly time, partly enjoyment for me on the tempo. It's great on the rollers. I mean, I would not want to do three hours on the rollers of zone two. I did um, three blocks of an hour. Was it three blocks of an hour? Yeah. No, I did two blocks of an hour at tempo on the rollers with only five or six minutes recovery. Um, that was about my limit. You got one and a half abs. Nice, David, nice. One and a half abs. There we go. I've done it. I should join the event. I don't really know about that, Martin. I guess for sure um, you don't want to be in the red for too long in terms of the heart rate because that's just going to be unsustainable and burn you out but there are others who know much more about this I do always look now because Ed's got me looking at this at the efficiency factor when I'm hitting tempo and I do keep an eye on you know, towards the hour, end of an hour of tempo on the back end of the, the ride that I did so you know four hours in um, my heart rate was drifting up higher than I wanted and so I knew that I was ready to finish then so I do, I do watch it but generally I find that on the longer rides if I control the power the heart rate remains controlled. Cheers Mark, how are you? <laughs> Thank you. I am properly rambling today. Uh, hey Philip, yeah I love the hit sessions um, and definitely um, I was doing mainly that with Ed um, really from February 2020 um, right the way through to kind of November 2020 um, with a very polarised approach although I didn't do tons of zone 2 in the middle I just had rest days and things like that and I got very good fitness out of it especially around the recovery and the upper end power um, but I'd never done an endurance block of training and so we started with zone two and then I kind of evolved it to the tempo because that's what I preferred. But definitely 
hopefully we'll see if my fitness is good enough for the sportives. I've got a second one planned in Chilton Hills. If anyone lives out that way, there's like a hardest hundred Chilton Hills. I think it's like the 26th or 27th of July, or June. So I'm gonna do that. And obviously we've got the, um, hard, uh, the Struggle Dales on um, Sunday, this coming Sunday. Well, next week on Sunday. Second jab for you both, nice one Mark. And I think Jane might get her one accelerated too. Yeah, uh, we need the acceleration I guess with the Indian variant. I use um, the, uh, the Wahoo. Right. So I think Nick Brownbill's gonna be in this. Anyone else riding in this now? Cheers, Liam. You find it's a different kind of fatigue, Ian. What, it, it hurts in a kind of muscle soreness way after a lot of it, or um, just the general fatigue? Hey, Jan, you're right. What would get DS Aaron hot and bothered? Let me have a look. <laughs> a dehy yeah, bodybuilding dehydration protocol. Yeah, that would get you the abs. I think, well, the goal at the moment is to put in some decent efforts at the sportives. Um, I think, uh, you know, the, the main goal had been La Marmotte where you have a time trial up, out do as a day of recovery and then you do, you know, the 175 kilometers and 5,000 meters or whatever it is of climbing. So that was what I was building to with all of the tempo because I was hoping to ride the climbs at tempo. Hey Alice, good morning to you. Um, but now, because it looks so stressful to travel to Europe and there'll be uncertainty and difficulty with the airports, I'm trying to focus a little bit more on UK events. So I've got Chilton, Struggle Dales, I've got the Exmoor Hardest 100 that was postponed to August. I've got a little one in Redbourne. I might do a TT. I'm meant to be doing, what's it called? Um, the uh, one in uh, Lake District. Uh, really good one, um, Fred Witten. But if there's the ability to go to Italy, I might do that instead. Yeah, Struggle Dale's gonna be fun. And hopefully, at the very end of September, I'm down to go to the Hort route, Bon 2. But we will see. Thank you very much, I really appreciate that. More or less golf. Right, here we go. Game time. Godspeed, cheers Lord. Just trying to find the rhythm. Probably cooled down a little bit more than I'd have ideally wanted. Feels like a shock to the system. There's Nick in the white jersey. Yeah, I did focus all right there, didn't I? Cheers, James.
you're three hours into 100k. Nice one, Daz. All of it tempo. Cheers, Chris. Yes, indeed. Looking forward to watching you perform stand-up comedy. That's the trip of choice. Diamonds in the legs, we will see. I had a spin out of, the, oh dear, sorry. Sorry, Lord. Apologies, Lord. Off the front, very remiss. We will see. I spun out the legs yesterday. A three hour race for 100 kilometers. Oh, you can last for three hours. Yeah, but you're proper strong, Daz. Yeah, using the what bike, Camille. So we go around the edge of Watopia. And at some point, I'm not sure when, there is the volcano climb. This was not very gentlemanly. There's a few matches. <coughs> I know. I can recover at power zone five. Lower threshold, 250 to 280 watts. I don't think there are points for the sprint. They caught me by surprise. As you can see. <coughs> Dear me. That was a power zone 10 long surge. Sorry. Power zone 10 meant to be up to a minute. It was a bit longer for a long surge. Oh yeah. Um, cadence, Joe. Focus on the cadence. Oh, it's got primes. Thank you, Stuart. Gotcha. Cheers, Mini Taj.
That was not pleasant though. Cheers, Dominique. It sure did, Stefan. Thank you very much, Cows of the Legend. Sorry, Lord. Coach is watching. Cheers, Coach. Coach Lavarack of the minute waistline, but gargantuan and FTP. Yeah, at least it's settled. <laughs> this is not going to be how the struggle starts next week, Mini Tosh. Are you still going to say hello? Yeah, sure is. Hey, Mithinen. Following Nick's wheel. <laughs> Final chance to set for superiority. Yes, I wish. But Craig Ward and David Raynham, they probably do better than with me and their team on their own. Thank you, Darren. Cheers, Lars. I bought a specialized bike for the WTRL and some wheels. That's all I've ever bought.
Cheers, Lord. I'll try that. Yeah, that was I think the thinking. I took the advice from the team as to what bike to buy. Tron today though. I didn't know if the Tron. Oh, I don't know why I took the Tron. You're right. I should take it as specialised. I switched off the Edmonda, the Edmonda, which I used for the um. Surrey Hills last weekend, which nearly killed me. Surrey Hills, I was in all kinds of trouble the rest of the day. This is hard. Mega pretzel. Nice one, Patrick. Cheers, Harrison. Hey, Samuel. Thank you. Car must be of lower value than the bike. <laughs> yeah. Broken that rule. Prefer the bike. Oh, this is quite a hard race, this. I actually prefer the Camargo.
it's not as good a bike. But something about it, I don't know what it is. Ha <laughs> ha! Nice one, Phil. That's very funny. Try and get back back a bit more steer. Oh, I'm struggling here. Yeah, I find a drop off the back. So I'm going to sit back a little bit and experiment. Trying to float. Cheers Liam, good luck with that. Uh, Imonda with the lightweight wheels. Haha <laughs> David. Feeling better than last week, yeah it's more measured performance so far other than that 400 I do feel like DME though at times I'm just trying to conserve energy as Stuart says and float on the pedals Feels better. Yeah, it's a fair old song, isn't it? Quite fast as well. That's my problem too, Patrick. Exactly the same. I don't have that punch.
How far to the volcano? Should have done a recce. Thank you, Lord. Okay, conserve energy, for it. Yeah, Link, I bet. Oh, Dimmy. There you go, Dimmy. Yeah, 100% training difficulty. All right, for this course though, eh? it's just a bit more gears you gotta use. Haha, <laughs> five, 600 watts. Not very impressive at the end. Yeah, 
Yeah, there are, aren't there, Stuart?
Nah. No PB. Just want to give VO2 max effort. Sorry about that. Oh dear me, I'm ruined. Cheers Nick, you keep going mate. Yeah, I just didn't have the power to use my feather earlier. In all the endurance, I've lost some of my top end power. But there were stronger riders than me there as well. And Nick has dropped off the front. Trying to recover in my power zone five. Oh dear me. Oh. It's easier in the peloton outdoors, in the crits, harder to get off the front and very hard as it is in Zwift to get back in if you get dropped. But as a lighter rider, it takes much less energy for me to ride in the peloton on flat terrain. For example, as a Cat 4, I can stay in the peloton on mixed Cat 2, 3 rides. Obviously, riders would go off the front. I'd be nowhere near that. And, you know, I got promoted out of Cat 4 reasonably quickly. So, a good peloton you know, 20 riders, maybe 10. You feel better draft. <clears throat> In Zwift, I have to be like 3.8 to 4.2 watts a kilogram to stay in. I'd be nothing like that outdoors, like three. 
And that's that peloton moving at about 40 kilometers an hour. On undulating terrain. All right, so we've got a little group now. I'm going to ride my Power Zone 5. Hadfield, yeah, good wheel. I just want to ride Power Zone 5 now for a time trial, as it were. Oh, so Ben, how you going? Binary head. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to practice now, Ed. Power Zone 5.
I didn't realize we had this.
Oh, that was a very hard race. I'm sorry I got dropped. Nice one, Nick. Oh. Yeah, it's proper hard, that. So after I got dropped, you can see that I just wanted to experiment with, I think it was about a 15 kilometer time trial, swift kilometers in my power zone five, which is basically sweet spot, you know, 260 to 280 watts, or 250, yeah, 250 to 280 watts ceiling and floor. And definitely, hopefully you can see there what I'm driving at for me personally regarding Tom Danielson's book. If we look at the power curve, let's have a look at the power curve. I just wanna, so if we exit. So if we end the ride. If we go to the timeline. So basically, where there is green and yellow, I was typically in the 250 to 280 range. So you can see power zone five predominates until we get to like my VO2 max effort on the climb, a bit of recovery post the climb and then time trial back with a couple of little surges. And this is why Tom Danielson's book resonates with me. Because basically he is saying, in power zone five, you're sparing glycogen. You're using body fat as well. But also you can recover in power zone five from these short or long surges. Long surge being a minute in what he calls power zone 10, uh, uh, nine. Short surge, sorry, minute to a minute and a half in power zone nine. Half a minute to 60 seconds in power zone 10. Power zone 11 is basically the sprint. And you can see here that that's exactly what I'm doing. Long surge there, that was about a 90 second, you know, proper nasty effort. Then back into power zone five, the heart rate recovers, well, sort of recovers. Another little surge as we go out of Tempus. A couple of surges, not quite sure where. And then the climb. Now obviously on the descent, you use the terrain to recover better. And then power zone five all the way back, but with a couple of little surges and then edging up into power zone six, i.e. lower threshold per Tom, but basically FTP for me. Um, and that's why it resonates. I'm not saying everyone should ride like this or anything like that, but definitely for my physiology, the book sounded good. It sounded, it accorded with what I knew to be sort of how I ride. Um, oh yeah, de de definitely Ed. No, I mean, Ed, you're 100% right. I mean, this is no good for racing. Um, it's, it's, I'm seeing Tom's method as more a way to keep me disciplined on the longer rides outdoors. I, in Italy, I learned that I went, I got, I got to the bottom of a climb and thought, well, I should be able to ride my threshold, my FTP threshold for an hour. And I'd burn out. And I should have known that because my hour of power is always 15 to 20 watts lower than my FTP. And basically, um, you know, I just wanted to experiment with that today. But bottom line is you're 100% right you have to ride the race. And that means probably going, once I've got a couple of the sportives out of the way with you back to a more polarized approach because my top end power and my ability to sustain top end power has deteriorated a bit. Albeit that, was, that wasn't a bad little climb that for me. I mean, that was, you know, it wasn't bad that in the middle of a fast race. Oh. So, 
Um, thank you very much for all the support today. Really appreciated it. Ed, I know you've got your, your 50 kilometer mile, 50 mile, is it 50 mile? 50 kilometer time trial coming, so very best of luck with that. Yeah, so you know, the power is good over the hour. What was the six minute power? Yeah, so, yeah, it wasn't a, so I didn't, I, I was hoping to be in a kind of 320 range on the climb. Obviously I didn't manage that. Yeah, no, Titanium Band, definitely I did. Um, but I had, I kind of, oh, what's going on there? I'd set my heart on a good time trial to the end. Um, and you know, we've, for position 30, I guess, um, I deemed that it was probably better to see if I could have a hard finish at the end of power zone five, right at the end there. And obviously you can see there, I lack the kick, um, having sustained, you know, a good, I guess, 15 minutes of, of that sort of sweet spot kind of power. Um, I lack the kick at the very end, especially having built up to power zone six. Anyway, thank you all very much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Travel plans for next weekend. Um, I think I'm going up on the, um, the Friday night. Um, Jane and I have got a, uh, a flat book, so I'm gonna be around on the Saturday, and it'd be great to meet up with people on the Saturday. Um, jump onto the Discord um, and, um, for the Struggle Dales segment of it and we can figure out where to meet up and we may even be able to eat inside yes we can as of or uh, so even if it's raining we may be able to get a socially distanced meal for six <laughs> um but yeah looking forward to that might have a little uh, gentle ride out on a saturday if people are up for that um a couple of leg openers maybe even hit a hill one hill hard because you know how often do we get to be in god's own country you're, sat you're there Saturday to Monday. Nice one. All right, brilliant. And Ed's coming up on a Saturday. So yeah, looking forward to that. Super excited. Very nervous, but really, really looking forward to seeing everybody or lots of people. And um, thank you ever so much for the support. Agnes, once again, amazing um, etap uh, to Netherlands on the bridge. Love what you did there. Full respect. 105 kilometers, 800 meters of climbing. Awesome. Anyway, in the meantime, whoever you are and whatever you do, please remember to live, thrive, and do stay ever so healthy. Take care and good luck, Ed.